Welcome to the show, everyone. It's CryptoLark. Today, we're going to be talking about blockchain energy projects, looking at some of the top projects in the space, trying to figure out who is offering the best overall package. We're going to be looking at what they do, how they compare, what the partnerships are like, all of that and more after a massive thank you to you guys. Your liking and commenting and sharing these videos around the internet mean all the difference to the channel. So thank you so much for your continued support of the channel, everyone. It is much appreciated. And of course, you do need to remember that this is not professional financial advice, guys. This is just a dude talking about cryptocurrencies on this lovely place we call the internet. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Our first project, of course, Power Ledger. Now, Power Ledger is at $192 million market cap at the moment. You do have to take into account that only a third of the circulating supply is currently out there of the total supply of 1 billion tokens, which will be coming out as the platform starts to develop moving into the future. But what is Power Ledger trying to do? Well, peer-to-peer -peer energy trading, but it's going to be so much more than that. Smart supply and demand management tools, microgrids, grid management and metering, they're also going to do asset germination events where you can do things like sharing of the assets or the sale of the assets. Electric vehicles are definitely a focus point for them as well. Power ports, carbon trading, and even transmission network management tools. So a lot of powerful tools that they're bringing. And it's a really great suite of tools for any home supplier that wants to be a producer of energy to come on board very easily. They have a two token model. So we have the power token, which is what you'll buy on exchanges. That gives you the ability to create sparks, which represent one kilowatt hour of energy. The team for Power Ledger is an absolute knockout and they've already got some amazing partners like uh, Western Power in Western Australia, Vector Energy here in New Zealand. And they've only been moving from strength to strength recently. They have, of course, a pilot project at the moment in the city of Fremantle after receiving an $8 million grant from the Australian government. They are also working in Melbourne right now with Greenwood Solutions, bringing peer-to-peer -peer energy trading to the suburbs of Melbourne. They're also making inroads in the United States. A recent partnership there is going to be exposing them to a lot of people around the United States as well. BCPG is going to be looking to use the Power Ledger platform in the Thailand Smart Park. And it just keeps going, guys. Tech Mahindra will be trying out Power Ledger for microgrids in India. And a recent announcement, which is super exciting as well. They're going to be trialing their blockchain project with Kepco, not Tepco, but Kepco. This is a major energy supplier in the Osaka region of Japan, an amazing partnership anyway, and it's just another great partnership in a line of great partnerships. They've been really moving on the ground a lot, getting a great list of partners lined up. So this is a very impressive thing with Power Ledger. Next up, we have Electrify Asia. Now, Electrify Asia, only a $60 million market cap at the moment. So comparing that back to Power Ledger, which is three and a little bit times more than Electrify Asia at the moment. You can see Electrify Asia has got a lot of room to grow still. Similar circulating supply at the moment as well. Now, what is Electrify Asia doing? Well, obviously the focus, as the name says, is a strong focus on the Asian markets. Now, the Asian markets are just exploding. As we know, countries like China and Vietnam and Indonesia and the Philippines and Thailand are only increasing their demand for energy. And those countries, particularly Southeast Asia, have got so much renewable energy potential, it's crazy. The sun shines there all the time. The solar potential is massive, not to mention, of course, some of the thermal potential, for example, in Indonesia. This is an existing company in Singapore. It's the first peer-to-peer -peer energy marketplace in Southeast Asia. And they're really trying to take advantage of the increased liberalization of the energy markets in the region. So obviously that peer-to-peer -peer marketplace will help cut out the middlemen and also empower small producers, which I think is really important in the Southeast Asia region. It may not be as important in places like Australia, although still very important, but I think it just gives an extra level of empowerment in these more 
uh, impoverished developing nations. They're also going to be bringing out their own power pod, so they're going to be providing their own smart meters. You'll have to pay a deposit in ELEC tokens for that. They're going to have an e-wallet as well. Now this is where it gets interesting. Omise Go. We all love Omise Go. It is such a cool project. There is a really strong synergy with, with there with them. Jun from Omise Go is an advisor to Electrify Asia. Electrify Asia will be using the Omise Go platform when it gets up and running. Very, very interesting. In 2019, they will be expanding into Australia and the Philippines. But the one really, really big thing here has got to be TEPCO. This is what is so exciting about Electrify Asia. Yes, they're an existing company in Singapore. That's cool. We like that. We like existing companies. TEPCO is the fourth largest energy company in the world. So that is a massive partnership for them to have. And of course, really puts them to an extent on par, at least as an initial partner with some of the partnerships that Power Ledger is getting. So it makes them a very strong competitor in that space. Also, of course, it's worth mentioning that the token will be used to uh, be deposits. So if you want to be an energy producer, you have to put a deposit down. It's also be used as a transaction fees and customer loyalty rewards. But the main settlement will be done in fiat. That's an important point, I think, to point out. And they've just um, joined the Ethereum Community Fund, which is also very cool. Helps, of course, Misego and Quantstam and quite a few others are already in that community fund. But really cool to see them hopping on that as well. I think that'll help get them a lot of recognition moving forward. Next up, we have WePower. WePower right around the same price market cap wise as Electrify Asia at the moment. A little bit higher circulating supply. Now, what is WePower trying to do? WePower is probably the most different of all the ones we're going to cover today. Because what they're doing, essentially, they want to do crowdfunding for renewable energy. And so it's quite a different model. Even though it's in the same industry, the model's different, which I think makes WePower a very interesting outlier here in the group. It can be quite hard for projects to actually get funding, to get their, um, you know, their solar funded or their windmills funded. It can take a long time. Crowdfunding can be a really great answer for that. Now, the WePower token, this will give you early access to sales. It will also give you a, a, a minimum of 0.9% of tokens from that sale. So if an energy producer in Spain wants to set up a 100 megawatt solar, well, 0.9 megawatts will go to the token holders, which is pretty cool. The team is very solid with WePower as well. Now, these are the guys who basically made the digital energy grid in Estonia, and they've got a pilot there for the WePower platform as well, which is pretty awesome. They're aiming to be operational in Spain, Australia, and Estonia by the end of the year, which is, of course, quite ambitious. They've been uh, given a nod of recognition by Fast Company. They've also partnered with 220 Energia. And of course, Ellering, which is the Estonian-based power provider, which is going to be helping them roll out that pilot program. And we do have a platform preview coming up here in only a couple of days. They'll be launching that in Melbourne, Australia. Next up, we have Restart Energy. Now we're starting to get into those much smaller caps. These are projects that have not really taken off as much as the previous three that we mentioned. But let's break down what Restart Energy is trying to do. Now, they have the MWAT token. So this is an established company in Romania. It's got customers already. It's already got a good base of partners. They are offering business to customer solutions as well as a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Now, they'll be providing the smart meters for people. There'll be franchise opportunities, which is also pretty cool. And they have very ambitious expansion plans. I worry it may be too ambitious, their ex expansion plans, but nevertheless, it is very ambitious. Again, we see a two-token model here, where essentially what you have is you have your MWAT token, which gives you the right to sell up to one megawatt of power on the platform. And you have the kilowatt tokens, which are the ones that you actually buy. Those are the units of energy. Now, as an MWAT token holder, you can get give dividends from the producers in the form of kilowatt tokens. That's kind of similar 
to what the guys at we Power are doing, except here it's between a 1 and 5% bonus, which is a bigger bonus, as well as additional loyalty rewards for holding MWAT tokens. So the potential more for reward here with MWAT, and of course with such a low market cap, it does have a lot of room to grow compared to the other ones. They, of course, have been getting a lot of interesting partnerships, buying up a lot of assets all around Estonia. Now, this is not official yet, and they've only been in conversations, but they are aiming to have aiming to have a partnership with Illyrian Clean Power in Italy, but that hasn't happened yet, so we'll have to wait and see if they can announce that partnership moving forward, but those talks have been going on. Waiting to see some really big partners, though, and that is where, of course, the previous three projects have been doing so well. They've been getting really, really big partnerships all around the world. Like to see a few more coming in for Restart Energy. And finally, we have Sun Contract, $23 million market cap. At the moment, only $120 million approximately in the circulating supply. Now, what is Sun Contract trying to do? Peer-to-peer -peer energy marketplace, of course. This also includes hardware, though, which is pretty interesting. They're calling this the energy pool. Now, SNC tokens will be required for all purchases in the pool, which I think gives perhaps a stronger incentive for using the Sun Contract token and, of course, more growth potential for using the Sun Contract token, potentially. As, you know, for example, Electrify Asia, it doesn't have to be the settlement layer. It's only used for fees and rewards, so it's a little bit different and doesn't perhaps create as much demand as there may be for Sun Contract. However, if you're doing billions of dollars a month in transactions, the transaction fees will probably be pretty substantial. Whereas with Sun Contract, they're focused in Slovenia. Now that is where they're starting off. It's a solid running project already. They do have future ambitions to expand internationally. They want to bring microgrid management in in the future. Now remember back to Power Ledger, they're aiming to have that much sooner than the guys at Sun Contract are. Also, we might see smart substations and metering and all these different things coming on board. They have just had their platform launch party very recently, so that's really cool. So the question has to be, who is the god of blockchain power? Well, in my opinion, Power Ledger at this point is the undisputed king of the blockchain energy projects. They've got an amazing list of partners already. They have so many different pilot programs. They have support from the Australian government, from the government of Western Australia, uh, and on and on and on and on. And not to mention, of course, a fantastic team. And they probably have the widest use case and aims of any of their crypto projects. Definitely Power Ledger has to be number one. Now, that being said, Power Ledger is also more than three times in value than any of the other projects. That's something to keep in mind here. Power Ledger previously, during the previous highs in the market, was valued uh, up over $600 million. So it was a very high market cap for this. So we did see some real serious growth on Power Ledger previously. So even if you were to invest in Power Ledger today, just to get back to our previous highs, which of course I truly believe we're going there this year, and beyond, it would only give you a 3x potential for your investment. That being said, I'm still very bullish on Power Ledger, and I think it's gotten a fantastic future ahead of it. But if you're looking for something that is potentially going to give more returns, Electrify Asia is also one that I'm quite bullish on. That partnership with TEPCO is massive. The synergy with Omise Go really gives them a high profile as well and it's only a $60 million market cap. So there's a lot more potential here for growth, for Electrify Asia moving forward. We Power as well with their quite different model of what they're trying to do compared to Electrify and Power Ledger might also have a lot of success. Now, Megawatt, I'm less bullish on, as well as Sun Contract, to be honest. I like what they're doing. I feel like they're too focused on their specific regions, even though they do have international ambitions. And I feel like the, um, the, the teams and the partnerships behind the other projects are much stronger. But hey, that's just the two Satoshis of a dude talking about cryptocurrencies on the internet. Now, 
I do want to point out here as well, some of you guys might be going, oh, what about like Irene Energy or some of the other ones? I didn't want to talk about any of the, the super low market cap coins. And I was like Pylon Network out there, for example. And I didn't want to talk about anything that is an upcoming ICO or currently an ICO. So I just want to talk about the projects that are out there on the market today. And the most, of course, interesting ones of those. But you can let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section down below. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.